Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Almira Markets webinar. Today is 20th January 2016, and uh, we will talk about some interesting psychological things, such as how to defeat a gambler within yourself. As you probably know, if you traded today, uh, I was uh, maybe it was not a late analysis of GBP dollar, but one of the things uh, which I wanted to show you is how to actually uh, trade a, a very good setup and we had excellent setup for GBP dollar which exactly rejected at our POC so that is one of the reasons why I always say don't be a gambler be a trader because I have received a lot of questions uh, about GBP dollar can I go long can I go short and I was very clear I said okay go short at 4200 and uh, probably the price should reject and the thing is it rejected but if you did it that is one of the steps towards being a real trader not a gambler because gamblers will usually lose and traders will usually win if they know what to do so today this is a good example of how to defeat the gambler within yourself so let's start with our webinar Risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with Forex market by accepting the risk you're also proceeding further with me and Armira Markets will take no responsibility for information accuracy. This is solely my opinion. It's con not connected to AMUK's opinion and Forex is risky business so treat it as such and the webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. And finally guys, download Armira Market Supreme Edition. It will definitely enhance your trading. If you're not able to trade from your PC, go to web trader platform and trade directly from the web. Of course, Admiral Market is officially the best MT4 broker. So, uh, yes, one more thing before I forget, guys. Uh, tomorrow is uh, we will, uh, Forex Street will uh, we'll, uh, start with popular votes. And the thing is, both me and Armillar Markets is, has been nominated for Forex Awards 2015. So, as always, guys, if you think that me and Chris and Armillar Markets are, uh, are, uh, should be awarded with, with, the, with the best award for 2015, you can vote for us. Uh, we already sent you the link, so if you haven't received the link, uh, you can email me and I will send you the link again. It will take one minute of your time and uh, you will see the, the, the two options are Admiral Markets and on the next question you will see my name. So basically by voting for us, of course, you will be supporting us to be even better if it's possible, of course. <laughs> Joking. So yeah, this, this is it, guys. So basically... Uh, we, will, we will be talking about now uh, about uh, gambling in general, psychology of a gambler, psychology of a trader, psychology of a gambling trader, and uh, we will see the cure. So basically, those are the topics and bullet points which uh, we will uh, talk about today. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now, let's see uh, the first thing. Uh, what is gambling, basically? So, does anyone know a definition of gambling? Let's see, does anyone know or, or for a gambling definition? Oh, I'm still waiting for some answers, guys. So, probably you have uh, experienced that in your trading life or in your life in general. So, does anyone know how we can define gambling? I don't see any, well, it's illness. Law is saying it's illness. Well, basically, it depends. Bradley, yeah, it's, it's, it's close. Uh, the answer was very close. Taking unnecessary risks, it's very, very close to gambling. MJ is also very close to gambling. Uh, he's saying always lose. Yeah, usually for gamblers, they say uh, gamblers will always die broke. Uh, exactly, Riho. Uh, it's when you hope too much. Indeed. Very good answers, guys. 
Al is saying a game of random chance. Exactly. One more thing. So, guys, I see you, you're all of you. Bradley, again, it's an addiction too. So hard to stop doing it. Exactly. And, guys, I can see from your answers that you at least once in your life try to be a gambler in a trader's world. Okay. So, indeed, every answer which you have given me so far has been correct one gambling is making a bet on the outcome of some event you can place a bet on forex market right horse races games of chance dice cards bingo lottery slot machines roulette and those bets usually consist of money or other assets assets which are won or lost depending on whether a correct or an incorrect prediction is made okay so I have I have uh, say, said it out loud prediction what is a forex trading forex trading is an a reaction right you predict right but you won't make any money by predictions okay Unless you're an analyst, so you are paid for the analysis, which is okay. But after a prediction has been made, you need to react. Okay? So gambling is only a prediction because you cannot react, guys. There is no reaction in gambling. Take a casino, for example. If you go to casino, Usually, there will be one to two ch chances in favor of casino. So, casino will always win, right? For example, some, sometimes the prospect of winning a large jackpot motivates people to take unusual financial risks. And it can be a gambling addition. So, sometimes casino will let you win because you will be so inclined to gambling that you will probably develop a gambling addi addi addiction. So by predicting that the ball, let's say a roulette ball, will hit 18, or by, by playing cards, you cannot react. The, 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 the most you can do is to place your bets and hope, as Rico was saying, when you hope. Now, there is no reaction. The reaction is always reserved for a casino because when the ball is in play, when it stops, you cannot react. Your only reaction is, yeah, or peep. You know what I mean, right? That is the only reaction. In Forex market, it's totally different. And you know that. So, yes, it's a form of addiction. At its heart, gambling is behavior and paradoxical behavior because you know that house always wins, but you still want to give the money to the house because you are hoping that your revenge gambling positions will make everything, everything for the better. Usually it goes for the worse, right? Usually you lose everything and not just the money, but you're losing your health. Okay? Now, think about it. Casino odds, guys. You're playing against casino odds. So we already said that it's widely known that a house always wins. Whether you're gambling on roulette, fruit machines, horse racing, blackjack, right? The odds will have been meticulously arranged to ensure a steady profit for a casino or bookmaker. When in forex trading, you go with broker. And believe me, guys, brokers are not gamblers. Brokers earn money on totally different way and it's good every time you open a position right 
there is a small commission you are paying for the services. Honest broker, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, right? Because the position, opening of, of the positions are always important. So every time you open a position, there is a small commission which broker earns. And it's good, and, it's, and it should be like that. Because many times we want to do something, but we just cannot afford it. Why? Because we don't have a contact. We don't have a proper contact. Retail traders' contact with interbank ma market is a broker. And it's good to pay for commissions. It's great. Because when broker is happy with commissions, trader will always be happy. Re remember that. And in casino, it's not like that. Casino will not be happy if you make a win. Because there is no commission in casino. It's only your money. And I will tell you a few tricks which casinos do. Because back in days, I had a lot of friends. Now, I still have it, but I'm always trying to explain the difference and how they should treat Forex market. I have a lot, I've had a lot of friends who are actually professional gamblers. And a lot of times, guys, I have been witnessing to both their wins and defeats. Those are not professional matches because we, are, we cannot attend a professional match without taking a part. Let's say one of my friends is a professional poker player and he plays for a big money, but uh, I cannot uh, watch him play because I, I'm not a poker player. But when he plays for a relax and always for money, it's still the same. It's still that gambler psychology. He wants to win and he puts money. Not like when he professionally does it, but it's still a big money, right? Now, the only way, guys, for casino to be happy is to make you lose. Let's say 80 to 20 in casino favor. Now, the question is why gamblers continue to play when the overwhelming likelihood is that they will lose money well guys there were some uh, there were some experiments in psychological department of uh, i think it was the doctor name was dr luke clark he basically showed while gambler gamblers promote uh, so called illusion of control the belief that gambler can uh, exert skill over an outcome which is totally defined by a chance. So that is addiction, guys. It's called addiction. And there is a reliable pattern of brain activity. So he has concluded that using some brain imaging technology, that basically there are well-defined patterns of brain activity while gamblers perform a gambling game. It shows a natural activity when a person or a human receive a monetary win. Okay? And it happens in the center of the brain. And the center of the brain is a component of a reward circuit which also responds to natural reinforcers, reinforcers. For example, like food or drugs or cocaine. Okay? So it's very, very similar to a cocaine, not, not hard to say heroin addiction. And guys, Sometimes during the experiments, those gamblers ex which, who experience near misses, they, their brains were almost off, went off. They almost went in unconscious state during near misses. And a near miss trick is very often deployed by casinos guys okay i will 
I will explain it. The nature of gambling. Guys, slot machines are programmed with near misses. And uh, those slot machines will make gamblers think that they are close to winning, thereby encouraging further play. For example, if you know slot machine where you need to make four hearts, sometimes you will make three hearts and it will make you think that you should play it further. Now, that psychological stimulus of almost winning augments the desire to continue playing to try to get a big prize. And a near miss trick can be very dangerous for your health. Because you will say beep instead of yeah, right? But it will make you definitely be sure about it. It will make you play even more, hoping that the odds will turn to your favor. The loud ringing on slot machines serves to convince players who have been losing on nearby machines that it is possible to win by continuing to play. Guys, think about it. Those, you know the, the, the loud ringing on slot machines. When you hear it close to you, you think, well, this guy probably is winning, I will win too. And you know in your subconscious mind that it's possible to win. It's a trick. It's a sound trick. Now, for example, sometimes slot machines will flash messages such as play three or four credits. And it will imply that it is very advantageous to maximize the amount of the bet. And those messages are actually subliminal suggestions that may be obeyed subconsciously, guys. Subliminal suggestions. Play three credits, play four credits. Casinos will program slot machines to pay the jackpots only when maximum credits are played, even if the machine hits the best winning combination. The big jackpot is not paid unless a maximum bet was made. That will encourage gamblers to increase their bets or lose out on the big winnings. Now, have you ever think, have you ever thought why there was a low level of lightning and the absence of clocks? Usually casinos have no clocks. Why? Because when you, uh, when you try to, when you are paying attention to your watch or clock, that means that you are not relaxed, right? And if you are not relaxed, that will mean usually that sometimes it's not okay. Probably you think about losing and you will stop playing in casino. You will stop giving money to the house. The low level of lightning and the absence of clocks in casino actually relaxes gamblers and makes them lose track of time. Have you ever thought why casinos provide free alcohol, free alcoholic drinks? Guys, people, gamblers, which are under the influence of alcohol, have poor judgment and lose their money faster. Exactly, David. Crazy parents on the casino carpets will force your eyes up to the machines. Exactly same with sailings. So eyes on the machines. You, you cannot stare at crazy parents. Indeed. Also, guys, think about different financial incentives also. Free bingo on weekend, weekends, for example, will bring many patrons for the chance to win a lot of $1,000 or, I don't know, $2,000 in a single game. Casino will spend, let's say, 
$50,000 in prices to bring 5,000 people. But because each person will usually spend more than $20, $30, casino will always make money on days when business is bad. Sometimes there is also a trick in casino, for example, a membership trick. Casino will offer membership and you will have some benefits based on play time and money, right? But actually, you will feel that casino is giving you something for free. So you get something in return, even if you lose their money consistently in gambling. Okay? For example, I, I have known also a professional gambler. We met back in days. I remember that was in 1990, uh, 1997. Yeah, year of 1997. I was in Macedonia and uh, I, I, I wanted to go to Greece. And because I, I was on vacation, it was summer vacation, and during, uh, uh, during the trip in Macedonia, I met uh, a friend of my dad, and uh, he was actually a professional gambler. And he was one of the most famous gamblers in Macedonia and in Greece. And he explained basically that uh, he usually gets, because he is a professional gambler, and a lot of casinos know him, he said that uh, he often receives some offers for vacations and uh, out-of-town uh, trips, which are associated with gambling houses or establishments. And uh, now, when I think about it, uh, there, there is a good point, because that way you, you still think that you get some some things for free and in gambler psychology is if they if if the house is so good to them they really need to keep doing it, it it's a psychological it's again a psychological uh, subliminal message they cannot comprehend that they're actually giving the money to casino now uh, a gambler he was a professional gambler and actually uh, uh, at the time I met him, he was rich, and he was one of the richest persons in 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 uh, Macedonia. And he had a really he had, I, I think he had 12 different cars. He had two houses, two villas. He had some apartments in Greece. He was really really uh, a, a, a rich person. But the thing is that guy lost his wife he was divorced and i remember his story that he was actually saying that after all his wins and after all his defeats he he was not a happy person and the last information i know is that that person died not by a natural death he actually died from a stress a sad story and in one day, you can feel like you are the happiest person in your life. And on the next day, you are a begone. You are you're no more. Right? And now the only thing which we have on, on, on the poor, poor guy, I say it's, it's a memory. The memory which I use to present you the illness of gambling. So that is why I say, always say, guys, you can gamble in Forex market. But try to be a trader. Even if you gamble in Forex market, you still have a bigger chance to win, a higher chance for a win than if you're gambling on casino. Psychology, psychology of a gambler is definitely not able to control how much he or she spends. Okay? They're completely losing the mind over the money. Okay? 
they cannot control the, the risks, they cannot control the amount of money they are constantly paying to the house. Lucky enough, 1% maybe, who actually managed to make some money, probably will, will develop some form of illness because it's a, a natural stress. That is why I teach you how to trade relaxed. I don't want you to be gamblers, guys. I want you to be traders. There is a cure for that. I know that majority of you are serious persons, serious enough that you don't want to risk your own health and the health of your dear ones, your family. But sometimes the only trade you make is a gambling trade. And very often that gambling trade is a loss. And that is why your nerves starts to work out on you. That's a stress. That, that, that is not good. Stress is the worst enemy of a human body and mind. The worst enemy of yourself is stress and your loved ones. Gamblers will probably gamble with money reserved for mortgage or a rent. So think about it. You have the money which you want, which you reserved for mortgage or a rent, and you take the money and put it in casino. Is it a clever decision? Is it a good decision? By any means, the decision is bad. That is sometimes which you must not do. I won't say should not. I say must not. Never. It's an imperative. Okay? Never ever. Because if you do that, your life will definitely turn for the worse. Because even if you win the trade, from the money which you reserved for get, for mortgage or rent, that single win will make you gamble again with the same money in the future. Once you're lucky, twice you're lucky, the third time, no lady luck anymore. And you will lose. The amount of stress which you can experience then is abnormal. Not just for you guys, but for your family, your friends. Same, borrowing against equity of a home or other property, guys. Think about it. Do you really want to borrow the money against the equity of a home or other property and use it for gambling? You won't because you, you are not gamblers. But gamblers will do that, for sure. It's like a heroin addict. Heroin addicts probably will sell the whole house because they need money for dope. It's a physical illness, not just psychological illness. It's a physical illness too. And it will definitely lead to false optimism and self-delusion. Yes, we got few wins. We can make it third and fourth. That's, guys, false optimism and self-delusion. Casino will always win. What is the psychology of a proper trader now? A good control over emotions. We already covered psychological aspects of trading. Right? You all know that trading when euphoric is not good. But if you start to trade when you are optimistic, it's great. So a good control over emotions. It's a great thing. Fear 
will not carry over to next trade. Guys, if you keep the risk low, fear will not carry over to next trade. Because you know what is your maximum risk. There is no greed. Proper trading is not, is not greedy. Gambler is greedy. This is greed also. Borrowing against equity of a home or other property. Gambling with money reserved for mortgage or rent. False optimism. Everything is a greed. Greed, greed. I want more, I will revenge my losses. Casino will always win. Even if you are the best Avenger or Revenger, Casino will always be much better than you. It's institution. Forex is a business. Okay? So proper trader shows a good control over emotions he or she handles emotions well. Fear will not carry over to next trade because there is no risk, huge risk. No greed. Okay, no greed, guys. Because you are focused on pips, not the money. Positive expectation for a trade. Okay, by stacking odds, to your favor you are actually developing a positive expectation for a trade how you can do that with stacking the odds in your favor okay you're stacking the odds so by applying a good system by having a good money management by a proper psychology your chances are 70, 30, 80, 20 for a win. Who cares if you lose or win? Brokers don't care about your losses or wins. Casino cares about your losses because casino should always win. Brokers don't care about it. You make, you make a trade, you open a trade, you pay for a commission, Okay, great. Broker is happy. Okay? Especially ECN brokers. So, you know that you are basically, by applying a good money management, a good system, a good trader will have a positive expectation for a trade. Even if it, if it went in a drawdown, it would still be a positive expectation. A good trader is focused on risk and pips, not the money. I have personally, I, I was involved in institutional trading in 2010, 2011. And I have traded in a team. There were three of us. And we traded 100 thousand and fifty K dollar account hundred and fifty K pound account it was hundred and fifty K pound account institutional account there is no lots you can enter with 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 real money so you can place a thousand dollars for a pip you can place five thousand dollars for a pip there is no leverage it's institutional account hundred and fifty K guys the moment one of us started to focus on the money, a trade went awry, trade went wrong. As soon as our focus shifted towards risk and pips, remember, risk and pips, we started to win. Why was that so? Well, the answer is simple. As soon as you start thinking about the risk and, and respect your risk threshold, which is, let's say, 0 
0.81% per trade, not exceeding 2 or 3% per day, you will be focused on pips. Because money is at risk, but you know that it's a small risk. 0.56% for a trade is small risk. And you will be focused on pips. You won't be closing your trades after 5 pips. You will probably close your trade after 20, 30 or 50 pips. Most gambling traders will close their trades after 2 or 3, 5 pips. And let's get back to the story of institutional trading. One of my colleagues put 2 or 3,000 pounds in a single trade. A single pip is worth of 2,000 pounds. And as soon as the trade went five pips in profit, five pips in a loss, he started to sweat. And he closed the trade impulsively. Guys, be honest. Do you really think that five pips of a drawdown is something which you should care about? I personally don't care even if my trade goes 20 pips in a drawdown. For some trades, 30, 40 pips of a drawdown, guys. I don't care. You should not care too. Because your risk is well defined. But same, you won't be closing your trades after 5 pips, 10 pips. Why do I always say, guys, session recap webinars. Never ever take anything lower than 20 pips. You don't want to grab 5 or 10 pips. It's stupid. You don't want to develop a bad habit. You want to develop a positive habit. Be focused on risk and pips, not the money. Less is better, no over trading. Gambler will not think that less is better. Gambler will say more is better. You, a trader, will say less is better. And you will know that there is no over trading. If you respect the rule, you won't be making any revenge trades. Gambling trader will hold on a two position for too long or too short. If he, if he or she holds on a position for too long, it means he or she is greedy, guys. Greedy, greedy, greedy. And he will lose the trade. If he holds for a position too short, again, he is very greedy. Or he is very stressed because he cannot accept a drawdown. Over leveraging, it's not normal even to place 2,000 or 3,000 pounds, dollars on a single trade for a pip. It's, I would never do that. Over leveraging or enlarging position size is a big enemy of a trader. And a gambling trader will think, this is great. This is actually a friend of a gambling trader. Chasing the markets. A gambling trader will always chase the markets. Always. Try to run after it. And you know that when you chase the market, it's the same as if you were chasing the shadow. You will never catch it. Never, ever. Stop, and the shadow will come to you. Gambling trader will take random trades without any fundamental or technical validity. Just because price is going up, breaking resistance support, a, a gambling trader will jump in on a fry train here. No fundamental or technical validity. Why did I say short the pound at 42.00? I didn't say it because that was my, I don't know, just simple opinion. You can read it here. Both fundamental and technical understanding. If you have shorted this trade here, you would have made 50 pips today on a single trade. Why? Because the trade was valid from both 
fundamental and technical perspective, right? No feeling. You need to jump in a position when position is valid, approved by you and your system or a good analysis. No feeling, guys. Just it's a matter of good technical and fundamental understanding. The cure for this is make a plan, guys, as we were talking about plan. If you're not sure what a plan is, watch our webinar again. So make a plan. It's not enough just to make a plan. Follow the rules. You need to follow the rules. Respect yourself. If you, if you didn't follow the rules, that would mean you don't respect yourself. Because you personally made a plan. Then respect it. Respect the plan. Follow the rules which are technically valid, which are fundamentally valid. It's for you and you're doing it for yourself. Double check your risk, guys. If you're not sure that you are entering an over average position, double check your risk. Think about your risk all the time. Because if you lose the trade within the risk margin, you will be safe. Losing a 0.8% of a trade is nothing, guys. It's nothing. But if you lose 5%, 10%, 30% in a single trade, you are not safe enough. And it will be very hard for you to make it up for that. No overtrading. Definitely no overtrading. By making a plan and following the rules, you won't be overtrading. Treat it as every other profession. Because trading is not gambling. Trading is a profession. Be professional in your approach to Forex trading. Be professional in your approach to life. And other people would, will respect it. No one will ask you, do you need to sell your house to be successful? No, guys. You can be successful with $100. As long as you make some percent, you're successful. Forget about people telling you that you should make 20, 30% per month. They say it because they don't know anything about trading. Forget them and listen to us, what we have been saying, what we have been teaching you. Be professional. Reduce the risk. By reducing the risk, you will feel better. By reducing the risk, you won't be sweating. By reducing the risk, you will be happy. Sometimes, even if you lose, you know that there is another day unless you want to gamble. If you gamble, goodbye to your account. Margin call probably sooner than later. If you feel any of gambler's symptoms, which we have previously mentioned, stop trading. Okay, is it hard to press shutdown button on your trading station and PC, a Mac or laptop and go out of your office, of your home? Just press, just press power button and leave it. You will be definitely, you will feel definitely better. Talk to professionals. Talk to us, guys. Try to listen to us. Talk to us. Ask us, read blogs. Follow the webinars. This will definitely help you not to make those mistakes 
gamblers have. I know from my personal experience that when I reduce the risk, I always treat it as every other professional. I was professional. I've always been professional. But when I reduce the risks, and when I felt any of previous dimension gambler symptoms, I definitely stop trading. Reduce the re reducing the risk, great. But no over trading. I just press shut down. I, I just leave my PC. It's enough. I know that that is a cure because I have ex personally experienced both good and bad sides of trading. Losing and winning sides. And that is why I say on session recap webinars, especially guys, never ever move your stop loss and trade within the risk margin. It will definitely cure the gambling within you. And if you are professional enough and uh, clever enough, which I think that you really are, Thing that always that banks give you two percent per year, up to two percent, and in a, when when trading properly, you can make two percent, three percent constantly per month. Even if it's not constantly, it doesn't matter. Make it ten percent per year. You're still ten times better than the best bank. Ten times better. Your capital is 10 times bigger than it would have been if, if it, it was placed in a bank. So, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. I hope that you have enjoyed the webinar. I hope that you have understood 95% of this, what I was talking about, because if you did, that would mean that you are on a good way to kill the gambler within you and raise a professional trader same within you. Uh, aha, a question. What is your take on gambler's conceit? What is a gambler conceit, David? Can you explain what it, what it is, a gambler's conceit? I'm not familiar with the term, uh, what is a gambler's conceit, and I will tell you. Loy is saying, all that is true. Great, thanks for that kind of webinar, Tarantula. Yeah, thank you. Yes, of course. As I always say, I'm very happy to see when you're making money. I'm very happy when I see that you're actually are happy with our analysis and our, uh, I can say, uh, it's not signals, right? But it's almost like a signal. Because I have never seen, I have never seen uh, any other uh, serious website that it's giving you really the analysis as we are trying to give you. It's almost like a signal. Bradley saying, thanks for a great webinar. Thank you, Bradley, and you're welcome. Uh, David is saying, uh, uh, gamblers concede is uh, when gamblers think that they can stop while they're ahead. But, of course, they find that it's possible to do. Well, David, it's basically uh, gamblers concede is, yeah, they're, they're, this is it. False optimism and self-delusion. That is... A gambler's conceit, as you told me, now I understand the term. So definitely a false optimism and self-delusion. Because traders will definitely think that they can make money and they can stop, but it's impossible. They are deluded. And I think there is no cure for that, David. The thing is they need to be hit by a hand of life to understand it. And when I say hit by a hand of life or a hand of God, let's say, not a religion but just a term, okay, that means that they should 
they should experience so huge of a stress that they definitely are ordered to stop. For example, a divorce, or I'm not implying, but I say, would you think that really a, a gambler will still be a gambler if he has a cancer or some uh, disease which is which does not have a good prognosis? There is no cure for that. So that is the only way gamblers, which are really uh, addicted to gambling, uh, so so they cannot escape by these means. They should suffer from a hand of fate or a hand of whatever of life, whatever you call it. Yes, that's it. So the only way is a huge amount of stress or a, something coming from a life where they can actually stop trading. For example, one of my friends was an uh, alcoholic and he was also a trader. And I had two uh, friends which were actually, uh, they, they, they were on a verge of being an alcoholic, totally. They, they, they drank every single day. One of them is gone. I don't know what happened to him. He was very famous on Forex Factory. And I think that the guy is probably no more. I, I, I have never heard from him. And the other guy was cured. But how? Actually, he, he, really, he had two kids and he had a wonderful wife. And wife got away with kids and he, his whole life fell apart. And he realized it and he went on a, for an institution for an alcoholic addicts. And he is actually cured now. So only way to cure from a gambler conceit is a hand of fate. Thank you, guys. I don't see any questions. Nat is saying very clear clarification on gamblers versus trader. Thank you, David, for asking such a good question. And uh, Rico and all other, and all, every one other. So, guys, I wish you a great trading. Tomorrow I will come with new analysis, as always. Uh, Chris and uh, my webinar also, mutual webinar, and a lot of good webinars to come. Uh, and I will remind you to vote for us. If you think that we deserve your support, I will send you the link once more, so don't forget, voting starts tomorrow. Thank you. Again, I appreciate it, and I wish you a very good day and evening. Cheers and trade safe.